So get serious about your goals. Put them on paper. Write them down. There's all kinds. His goals, her goals, their goals. Business goals, financial goals, financial independence goals, family goals. I mean, there's so many things to work on on this that if you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Now, here's the third step to your goals. Check the size of your goals and the kinds of goals. How big they are, what kind they are, affects you. And here's one of the important phrases of the evening. Your goals are affecting you, whatever they are. Your goals affect your handshake. Your goals affect your attitude, personality. Your goals affect the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress. All day long, we're being affected by our goals. Now, some people have goals, but they have such lousy goals. The effect is bad. I asked a guy one time, what are your goals for this month? The guy said, look, if I could just scrape up enough money to pay these lousy bills. That was his goal. I'm not saying it isn't a goal. It's a goal, but it's such a lousy goal, the effect is bad. You don't jump out of bed on Monday morning and say, oh boy, another chance to go out and scrape up the money to pay my lousy bills. So you don't do that. Usually you say, oh, not another Monday. And some people have so given up on life, they have joined the, thank God it's Friday. How sad. Surely those are the same people when life is over for them will say, thank God it's over. Let me give you a Bible philosophy that teaches how to get whatever you want. That's the title of the next set of notes. How to get whatever you want from the Bible. Now, again, I'm an amateur when it comes to the Bible. I'm not a pro. But this I can quote, and I think that'll be sufficient. How to get whatever you want. Here's what it says if you're ready. It says, ask. That's it. End of notes. Ask. If there's one art in life to learn extremely well, that's got to be one of them. The art of asking. What does ask mean? Ask means. What do you want? And the formula is staggering. It says ask and what? A guy ought to look into that. He says, yeah, but you work where I work by the time you struggle home. It's late. You've got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night, ask, ask, ask. And the guys be, huh? See, you've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good asker. Now, let me give you three key points on asking and receiving. This can do it. Number one, asking is the beginning of receiving. Asking starts a unique process, mental and emotional. I don't even know how it works. All I know is it works. It's like pushing a button and all this machinery starts working. I don't know how, it just works. There's a lot of things you don't need to know how, just work them. Self-confidence comes from the lack of neglect. If you will not neglect to do the small daily disciplines, that's where self-confidence comes from. Part of good health is self-confidence. I know I'm going to be healthy. I take the Herbalife products. I eat the apple a day. I walk around the block. I do the jogging on the beach. At the end of the day, when you've really poured it on and you've done all the stuff, self-confidence grows. That self-confidence affects your health, it affects your future, it affects your psyche. So this is true. One of the great powers is self-confidence. Self-confidence means willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve. Some people say, well, I'll do it for a little while and see what happens. You know, I'll try a couple of things. If that doesn't work, I'm out of here. And all of us know that that kind of person doesn't have much of a future. But if you're willing to do whatever it takes. If I have to learn a couple of things, I will learn those things. If I got to learn five or six things, I'll learn all six. If I have to take an extra class, I'll take an extra class. If I've got to read the books, I'll read the books. If I have to consult with people who know more than I know, I will do the necessary consulting. Whatever it takes, I will do. That starts to develop unbelievable self-confidence. Self-confidence also comes from the ability to rise above your circumstances to rise above what happens, the petty little things, the discouraging things that would sink everyone else's ship except yours, that would cause someone else to quit early in the day, but you keep going. That kind of willingness to overcome all circumstances, whether it's the little challenges or the big challenges, if you're willing to do that, I promise you, this kind of power will work for you, and in you, the variable, it'll make a difference. The third on the list I had was enthusiasm. 
And here's what I wrote about enthusiasm. Enthusiasm that's powerful is mostly enthusiasm that is enthusiasm inside. 90%, 10% outside. We all know what the enthusiasm is like when somebody lets us see their enthusiasm, which is the, like the 90% and only 10% of it is inside. But the enthusiasm that really affects people is not just being loud, but the enthusiasm that runs deep, the enthusiasm that comes from deep inside, created by self-confidence, created by purpose, created by genuine willingness to help other people. That kind of enthusiasm knowing that you're going to get the job done, knowing you're going to affect people, knowing you're going to have testimonials flowing in from all kinds of uh, directions. That kind of enthusiasm. A lot of it is quiet. A lot of it is unheard. And the 10% that's heard, it rings a bell. People call it genuine enthusiasm because they know that what you say in the outward display of your enthusiasm is only a small tip of the iceberg of the enthusiasm you feel inside that really motivates you to do the best job you can. Beware of the telephone and all other systems of communication, especially the telephone at home and systems of communication at home. And here's one of the best lines I've got for you for the weekend. Let all communication systems serve you, but don't let them intrude. When it comes time to have dinner with your family, you shut off all systems, unless the ones that can take messages silently. Don't let the phone ring. Don't let anybody intrude, come through the front door nor the back door, nor through the telephone or any other device. So you can't reach John and his family when he's having dinner. The president of the United States couldn't get through. If you develop that kind of a reputation, father, mother, when we have dinner, when we're visiting and have this time with our family, nothing intrudes. So don't let these clever little devices keep intruding. You've got to have a place that's sacrosanct, it's, it's valuable. You don't let anything in for that period of time. Okay. Isn't that good advice? Excellent advice. Here's the next one. Read all the books. You know, I've only got a few notes here on time management, but if you've got some particular challenges, you run a big organization, a big corporation, you've got some challenges, there's plenty of books. 